Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be installing Kali Linux version 22.2 in VirtualBox on a Windows 11 PC. Before we get started, let's take a look at the minimum requirements. For RAM, the lowest that you can have is two gigs of RAM, four is recommended. For disk space, you're gonna want at least 20 gigs of hard disk space, two CPU cores, the Kali Linux ISO image file. You need VirtualBox and the extension pack. Now, if you don't have that installed, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through the steps. All the steps and tools used in this video will be linked in the description below. If you find this video useful, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to grow my channel as big as possible to reach as many users as I can. With all that out of the way, let's take a look at getting this installed. So we're at the official website for uh, Kali Linux, which is Kali.org. And I'll make sure I link this in the description below. We're gonna be downloading the ISO image file and we wanna select the bare metal option right over here. And you can see that version 2022.2 is the latest version that's out right now. We're going to be selecting the 64-bit option. And you just click on the download link right here, and it'll download the ISO image file, which is 2.7 gigs. So what I'll do is I'll skip over to the next step when this has already been downloaded. Okay, and the download is now complete, so I can go ahead and minimize this. And I'm going to open up my VirtualBox Manager. And I've downloaded my ISO image file over here in my downloads folder. So you want to make sure that you know where this file is before you begin the installation, because we're going to have to point to it in just a few moments. Okay, and to begin, the first thing that we're gonna do is click on the new button right over here, and we're gonna give it a name. So the name I'm gonna be typing in is just Kali Linux. The machine folder, now if you're running out of space, you can point this in a different folder or a different drive, or you can leave it as it is. Uh, for type, we're gonna be leaving it as Linux, and for version, wanna make sure that we select the Debian 64-bit, and then we can go ahead and click on next. For the amount of memory size that we want, we're gonna have at least four gigs of RAM available or more. Uh, it depends on how much you have available on your system, but four would be the minimum. Go ahead and click on next, and we'll be leaving this as default and click on create. Hard disk file type, we're gonna leave it as VDI and then click on next. And we'll also leave this as dynamically allocated. For file location and size, I'm gonna be leaving the path as default. You can change this if you need to. For the amount of disk space that we wanna do, I'm gonna be using 20 gigs. I recommend using at least 20 gigs or something greater. And once you have this complete, you can go ahead and click on the create button. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have Kali Linux selected over here and then click on the settings button up at the top. In general, we're not gonna be doing anything. We're gonna leave that as default. Then we're gonna go into system and we have four gigs allocated right now which will be fine. In the processors tab, one CPU is fine. The more you add, the smoother it's gonna run. So you can increase that all the way to the maximum green area if you'd like. Then inside display, we're gonna be maxing out the video memory. Mine goes to a maximum of 128 megs, which is gonna be fine. And then inside storage, in here what we wanna do is point to the ISO image file. So I'm gonna be selecting the empty disk over here. And then on the right hand side, I'm gonna click on this and then go choose a disk file. And I have my Kali Linux ISO image file selected here on my desktop, so that's good. You can go ahead and click on open. So that takes care of my modification steps. If there's anything else that you'd like to customize or change, you can do it within here. Other than that, you can click on okay. And we're done with that and we're ready to start up our virtual machine. So you wanna make sure that you have Kali Linux selected over here on the left and then you can go ahead and click on the green start button up here and it's gonna to start to boot up. So we're at the installation window right now, and I'm gonna be selecting the first option, which is the graphical install. So I'll have it selected. If you wanna choose any other options, you can go ahead and do that by hitting the cursor keys on your keyboard and then hit enter. In here, we have the option to select language. I'm gonna be leaving everything as default in this example, but what you can do is customize it however you please. We'll leave it as English and then click on continue. The location I'll be leaving as default as well, and the keyboard configuration I'll be leaving as default. The first thing that's gonna ask us to do is configure the network, and it has Kali as the host name. That's gonna be fine, so we can click on continue. Domain name, we're gonna be leaving it as blank. And now we can type in the username. So I'll just type in Geekrar here, and then click on continue, and then we'll click on continue again, and now we can type in a password. And once you have your password in, you can click on continue. To configure the clock, you want to select the time zone that suits you best. I'll leave mine as Eastern and then click on continue. We're going to be using the entire disk, which is a virtual disk. So we'll click on continue. And that is our virtual disk right now. And we'll be leaving it as all files in one partition. Click on continue. Then we can go ahead and select the last option to write changes and then click on continue. And now we're ready to say yes to write changes and then click on continue. Now the operating system is gonna be installed on the virtual drive. What we can do is jump over to the next step. Inside here, you're gonna be leaving the default options selected, but if you have other customizations that you wanna do, you can go ahead and do that now. We're gonna click on continue. Okay, and the next step over here is the Grub bootloader. We're gonna be leaving the default option as yes and then click on continue. And now we just wanna make sure that we're gonna select our drive and then click on continue. Okay, and the installation is now complete. We can go ahead and click on continue and it will reboot the system. 
All right, so the first screen that we get is the login screen and go ahead and type in the username and password that you had created during the installation phase. And here we are at the desktop of Kali Linux version 2022.2. In order to go to full screen and get use your entire display, go up to the menu view in full screen mode and then click on switch. And then we have the entire screen over here to use. You can use it as your full display and easily switch in and out of your desktop to your virtual machine. It's very useful and performs very well like this. And now you can go over here on the left-hand side and you have all your applications that are built in for intrusion prevention and a whole bunch of other applications. You go ahead and use Kali Linux however you want. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, please smash that like button, share the video, like the video. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and put it in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.